Welcome to the Dropout Multimillionaire Podcast, hosted by best selling author and serial entrepreneur Brian Will. Here we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Dropout Multimillionaire Podcast. I am your host, Brian Will. This podcast is based on my best selling book, The Dropout Multimillionaire 37 Business Lessons on How to Succeed in Business with No Money no education, and no clue. Today's episode is about negotiation, another one of my favorites. In fact, one of my next books that I have coming out is called No, and it's The Psychology of Sales and Negotiation. I love that title. Now, negotiation skills can either be a natural talent. There are people, you probably know them, who can talk their way in or out of anything. They can also be something that you can learn if you follow some, I will call them simple rules. However, it may take you a while to learn these rules, and you may have some brutal experiences before you're done. If you don't currently have a good negotiation skill set, then you need to find somebody who does to help you out. In fact, you need to get their help before you run up against somebody who is good at negotiation and they use these skills against you. In fact, it reminds me of a saying, I love this, when a man with money meets a man with experience, the man with the experience will end up with the money, and the man with the money will end up with the experience. Now, I love that saying, but let's talk about these negotiations and my three simple rules, okay? The first one, and it is the single most powerful word in any spoken language. Do you want to guess what it is? It's the word no. No is the most powerful word in the spoken language. When you're in doubt, just say no. If you're not sure what to do next, just say no. When you get your first offer, you should always say no. In fact, Richard Branson in one of his books has a saying, and it says that if your first offer doesn't insult them, you offered too much. And do you know why he says that? He says that because if you're talking to a negotiator, they're going to say no. I remember when I was buying a sports bar a few years back and we had gone through a negotiation. This is a small bar here. And the owner wanted a hundred thousand dollars. We went through all the due diligence on this deal and looked at all the numbers and financials and the staffing and sales. And we got down to the last day and we went to the closing table essentially. And I remember sitting across the table, it was him on one side, me on the other, and the business broker was beside me. And I looked at him and I said, I got to be honest with you, I can't buy this business for $100,000. My answer is no. And then I just sat there and looked at him. And he sat there and looked back and the business broker's eyes got really big and he didn't know what to do. And by the way, this leads to my next rule, which is called the power of silence. The power of silence rule says that once you've said something, the next person who talks loses. And in fact, we sat there staring at each other and he was waiting for me to say something and I wasn't going to say anything. And after a couple of minutes, he looked at me and he said, I can't sell this bar for nothing. I can't walk away with nothing. And I said, well, it's just not worth that to me. So I can do a deal with you, but it's not going to be $100,000. And we negotiated for a little bit and ended up buying it for $10,000, 90% less than when we started that day. And that's the power of no. It's the power of no and the power of silence. Now, I knew I had, uh, I had some leverage on him in some other ways. And so I kind of knew what I was doing walking into that deal, but that is literally the power. And the thing about silence, and it's always, don't be so quick to talk. Okay. In fact, there's a proverb and in, in, it's in the Bible and it says, even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue. Now, me, I like to flip that around because I'm a simple guy, right? I just say, look, the less you talk, the smarter you appear. And once you start talking, you have no place else to go but down. Does that make sense? So here's the deal, guys. Ask questions. This is the secret. This is the magic. The magic to selling, the magic to negotiation is asking questions. 
In the case of that bar I just told you about, I knew that he had already accepted a job and he was leaving. I knew that his lease was coming due in 60 days and he didn't want to renew it. I knew that his franchise agreement was coming due and he was going to have to sign another 10-year agreement. These are things I knew about the deal when I went to the table that day because I had asked a lot of questions. And once I knew the answers to those questions and I knew I had leverage, I knew he had no place else to go. And I knew I was going to get it for next to nothing because he had no choice. All those answers, all that negotiation, all of that came from simply asking questions. Okay. It's the secret magic bullet. Let the other person talk. They will tell you everything you need to know. If you're in a sales situation, you keep asking questions. They will literally close themselves. In fact, I teach sales. And one of the things I say is if you're a closer, if you're trying to close, you, you've already lost the deal. This person should have already closed themselves and they do that in the question asking process. If you're in a negotiation, you keep asking questions, more and more and more questions, and they will literally give you the keys to the deal. So stop talking and ask more questions. Okay. And then that leads me to the next one. My next rule here is be willing to walk away. Never, ever get emotionally involved in a deal. Never, ever accept more than you think you should take and never pay more than you think you should pay. Never. And it, it reminds me of another one. A friend of mine in New York, who's a venture capitalist, he taught me this years and years ago, and it's called the winner's curse. And the winner's curse says this. If you're negotiating for a deal and you win, there's a good chance you paid more than anybody else was willing to pay. Or you took less for your work or your job or whatever it is you're selling. You took less than anybody else was willing to take. So you may have won, but did you really? Okay, quick bullet points and we'll be done here today. So bullet point number one, never, ever, ever chase a deal. Deals are a dime a dozen. Another one will come along, I promise you. Always, always be willing to walk away. In fact, walking away is one of the, probably the second most powerful thing you can do because when people think they have a deal and then you say no and you turn around and walk away, more than half the time they will go, wait, 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 come back, come back, come back, let's do a deal. And that's when you know you got them. Never take the first offer. Always play the long game. Walking away is part of that long game. Everybody, and everybody knows this one, everybody asks for more than they think they can get, which means you should always offer less than you think they will take. Worst case scenario, if you're stuck and you don't know what else to do, just say no. That's it for today. Everything I talk about is in the book, The Dropout Multi-Millionaire. If you want to learn more, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, my YouTube channel, Twitter, we're all over the place. Or you can make it easy and just go to brianwillmedia.com. That's www.brianwillmedia.com. More information on the book, all the social media, past podcasts, guest appearances. And make sure you come back next week for the next episode. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Dropout Multimillionaire. To learn more about how we can help you with your business, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit www.brianwillmedia.com or the Dropout MM on Instagram.